Yo, what up, man? It's Trent Monroe kicking it with 24-7 live culture with my boy Adonis. It's go time. Tap in. I was on the east side. If you really want to know, I don't need to lie. Flipping hooks like a table bag. Studio flow. That's how I stay fly. Now I'm on the west side. Making sure my vocals hit a different way. I just lay a verse and tell them niggas catch a wave. Then load another track, I'm about to go again, go again I don't mean to leave you at home by yourself all alone Miss me so much, but I gotta just finish this song I was in the studio, studio I'm making hits every night just to bump in my ride, studio So stay by my side, the studio. What's up, good people? My name is Adonis Armstrong. We're back with another episode of Who's Hot Exclusive. I'm here with an amazing, talented singer, Trent Monroe. When I tell you this guy can blow, he can really sing. Appreciate you coming on the show today, uh, Trent. Man, it's my pleasure, brother. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Man, first question I got for you, man. Uh, when did you start? When did you want it to be an artist, like a musician? Like, when did you get into the game or think about getting into the game? Uh, so for me, it, it kind of all started in seventh grade. Um, I had some homies in middle school and, you know, we just had the video game beat machine and it was just all fun, man. We had a little mic in the closet with some, with some uh, egg crepe pattern on the wall. Yeah. We just have fun, man. We made music and uh, we wrote songs, and uh, it just kind of gradually grew on, you know, and it just it developed into what it is now. Okay. Uh, speaking of you and the homies, did you create your own beats and stuff, stuff like that in seventh grade, or you were just all freestyling and just having a good moment? So I was a singer songwriter, and yeah. uh, my boy Jermaine and Byron they made the beats, and then my boy Tyson he rapped. So we had like a little, you know, like a little team, man. You know, uh, it's called JK Productions. Okay. Just knocking productions. Um, and then, you know, those guys later on became like bigger DJs in my hometown, upstate New York. Um, and, you know, branched off into more like production. And I branched off into um, the, the singer-songwriter role, part of an R&B group um, called Signature. Uh, so... And that's kind of like, you know, what we did in the beginning. But we, we started out from from grassroots, man, making making tunes on the on the on the on a video game, the PlayStation One, and then we graduate to a computer. <laughs> okay, okay. Speaking of uh the group signature, uh yeah. is there any exclusive uh tracks that people can hear from the old uh, man? We we definitely if you type our name in online, we go it was the it was called signature, but it's spelled sing nature. Um so like the story was like singing is our nature. So we yeah we was we was dope man. We was uh we had like a few records on our, our local hometown radio station WDKX that reached number one. Um, we opened up for a gang of artists that came through the town, which was super fun. I actually miss those days, man. Like music back then was like just as a kid, it was just so pure. You know what I mean? You just wanted to. <laughs> You know, we wanted to just be like a little B2K group, you know what I mean? Running through the hallways, getting chased by the girls. Like it was, it was genuine, you know what I mean? The, the business wasn't involved yet. So uh, it was strictly passion. So it was fun for us, man. So, uh, but yeah, if you go on YouTube, you can, uh, this is like, you know, CD days, you know, we were still pushing the CDs, you know what I mean? So, uh, but you can go catch a couple of songs. We got a, we got a few on there. I'm going to give it to you and offer you and little stuff. A lot of us in the, in the chamber though, man, locked away. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. That's the vault. Okay. Oh man. Speaking of music, uh, who has been your biggest influence in helping you along your journey? Oh man, um, so many artists, man. Uh, I went through a heavy R and B phase, you know, with the likes of like Tyree, Savant, Joe, uh, G Wine, Usher. Of course, you know, those growing up, those were like you know the inspirations. But as I got older, um, I've I've leaned towards uh, some of the some of the older artists, you know, like uh, Sade, Anita Baker, um, 
Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, um, just because I, as I develop as an artist, I kind of wanted to pay attention to, you know, not only the type of music that I'm making, but the message that I had in it, you know, so, um, but, you know, a lot of, a lot of even artists today, you know, we got, you know, the Chris Brown, um, you know, just j j j the Drakes of the world, like all of those guys, man, Post Malone is, is a heavy influence of mine. Um, I think he's a musical genius. So uh, I try to listen to all genres too, man. Country music is is definitely uh, my go-to for a lot of songwriting ideas and structure ideas and just just the pen better. So I try to keep an open, uh, open mind about the music I listen to, but definitely, man, you know, the R&B cast back in the day for sure that got me kind of like kick-started. Okay. okay. Is it any um specific artists that you would like to collaborate with? From Man. from the old school or the new school? Ooh, I you know, I'd love to do a song with with uh with Joe for sure, for sure. Um he was a big uh him and and, and R. Kelly, you know, unfortunately on his situation, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. you know, derailed his career, but as far as the music that he made, it was, it's just timeless, man. A lot of those guys just made timeless music, even the artists before them. You know, it was love was like the balance to hip hop, you know. So, you know, you had self expression that hip hop brought to the table, and love was just like that, you know, that spiritual anchor that kept us in 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 relationships or allowed us to express ourselves when it comes down to what what we felt, especially as as black people about love, you know. So, um. Yeah, I definitely like to just, even if it's, you know, just for fun, you know, rock out one of them cats, man. And know I looked up to them back in the day and and, it, and was able to either pen a record or, you know, do a record with them in the future. That that would be amazing. I remember following you, uh, well, still following you on uh, Instagram. <laughs> Appreciate uh, it. Do the, um, do the uh, covers of uh, Tyrese and Joe. Uh-huh. Go check those out. I'm telling you, those are, you. you would think, it's one of them. He's that good when he sings. Uh, go check it out. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you. I just wanted to ask you, how do you generate your ideas of music? Because uh, I know you was you know, R&B soul, you're kind of R&B pop, and you just um jumping into Afro beats. So yep. do you, uh, like, what inspires you to make the music that you make, you know? Um, most of the music has always been from my own point of view. Uh, just relationships that I've gone through, life that I've lived. And also just from a kid, I was kind of, I kind of grew up fast in my household, having to make a lot of like, you know, decisions, and, you know, just being a, a a student, watching my parents, you know, relationship fluctuate up and down, them go through their, their ups and downs. I really kind of use them as a catalyst to express myself because I really didn't have a voice when I was young. So um a lot of my song ideas came from you know kind of either my own situation or me kind of vicariously living through other people and theirs and, and now that fast forward that I'm a little older I kind of pull from just it's the same method I pull from just watching people uh you know if I'm writing a song out of, about a particular topic that I haven't really experienced yet in life I have to kind of give a lot of attention to you know another another individual in, in their life and their situation and kind of be a listener to see what they go through and then try to paint the best picture I can but uh Afrobeats the music I've always had this this inner desire to kind of just dance and move from an authentic point and I feel like um most of you know the, the you know the people here in America our people here in America having roots back to Africa and different countries in Africa and just the culture and the music and that's not having it here it resonates with us so much you know so um being an Afro-Latino myself just I always wanted to kind of express myself through that so now that Afrobeats is kind of like the, the another massive up-and-coming music genre I felt it was only right to just you know add to what they're doing you know just and, and give a, a, a perspective of love over here just to the beat, you know? Yeah, uh, speaking on the Afro beats, uh, I listened to this Slip Slow and No Choice. Slip Slow, yep. The points are fire, man. I was like, okay, he he, he going on another level. You know, I got, 
I got it. <laughs> That's what's up. I appreciate it, dog. It was tough. I, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to. Um, what did it, you know? I didn't want to try to mimic their nest, like their flow and stuff. Like, I wanted to keep it real original to me and my experience here in America. You know, like I didn't. I didn't experience, you know, African music in Africa or like on a beach setting or that kind of tropical vibe you get from it. Like I, I experienced it in a, in a hot, sweaty basement in New York. You get what I'm saying? Like I experienced it listening to dance hall and reggae music. You know what I mean? Where I didn't really understand the Patois too clearly. You know what I mean? So like, I'm going to give it to you in my way. That's the way I'm going I'm to feed my lyrics or even my melodies, you know? So, and just being an R&B cat, like, I don't want to, you know, and I, I kind of got the cosign from a couple Afrobeats producers and they was like, hey, man, I really respect you not, you know, wanting to speak Yoruba or do our slang. Like, you're just doing your thing, you know? So I was like, man, I appreciate it. So it kind of inspired me to even make it even more once they once they said they liked the direction I was taking with it. Uh, are you going to make more Afrobeats or even like an Afrobeats album do you have an album coming up ep or anything yeah actually i do man uh it's in no it's it's getting finalized right now i just i did a couple soft releases just to see you know what kind of response i would get but i'm actually getting ready to do a full-fledged push uh with my afro beats project it's more of an afro pop kind of i got some real like poppy afro records in there that's um uh, but it's, it's it's dope man it tells a beautiful love story man and uh i'm looking forward to putting it out yeah, I can't wait to hear it, man. And speaking of like the music, um, is there any type of sacrifices that you had to make to get to where you are now? Because some people don't understand you might not be where some of the major artists are, but you are you are a successful artist because you have songs with major artists and things of that nature. Uh, what type of sacrifices um, did you have to make, you know, to be who you are today? Man, um. A lot, you know, um, you give up anytime you make a decision to pursue something in life, whether it's, you know, music or whether it's being a doctor or an actor or an actress um, or an astronaut, like you have to, you know, especially when it's something that most people around you, you know, haven't chose, you you give up a lot and you make a lot of sacrifices. You sacrifice time, you, you sacrifice relationships, you sacrifice, you know, being able to do things that, a lot of your friends partake in earlier in life, you know, you sacrifice marriage, you sacrifice, you know, your, your time you spend with your children and, you know, your loved ones, you know, so uh, uh, you definitely give up a whole lot, you know, for the, for the reward of doing something that most people um, chose another path, even though they loved it, you know, so, um, even making a decision not to do something you love because you want to be secure in another area is a sacrifice. Like you, you sacrifice your dream to be secure in another way. So, um, you know, it's, it's all a sacrifice, man. Every day you wake up to go after it, even when you achieve it, you know, you're giving up when you, when you become that actor or that actress or that superstar, you want to become, you're giving up the sim simplicity of life, but just walking to the grocery store and just, being in a park with your family or just, you know, going to a cookout or, you know, just driving around the, normally in the neighborhood without having a, a hectic schedule, you know what I mean? So it's, you give up so much, you know, just to, to do anything and make any choice. So, but it's, it's def it definitely is a lot. The sacrifice is a major part of it. Yeah, I think some people don't understand the sacrifice that you have to make when you're trying to attack a dream. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see it myself every day uh you know people Dennis where you been I've been working you know what I'm saying I'm working long hours for another man trying to do my work at the same time to so I won't have to work for the other man so yep. people understand that concept and I see the 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 greatness that you're doing so it inspires me because I always like to see I'm always inspired by other artists other entertainers because it keeps me motivated to keep pushing as well yep. um Speaking of, you know, the sacrifices that you make, uh, mm -hmm. what aspect of the music making process excites you the most and what discourages you the most? Um, man, I think 
so the best part of my music that I've found over the years that's that's kept me like really inspired and happy is my actual my son. So I have a I have a 13 year old son and um just making music and getting his response is so dope, you know, like canceling yeah. out the world and everybody else, just having uh, you know, something that I help bring into this world, like fall in love with the music that I make and give me feedback and and now it's to the point where, you know, he was young, he just knew every song, he liked every song. And now he's getting to the point where he's like, hey, Pops, you should do it this way or you should do it that way. So it just shows me like, man, like he's paying attention and, you know, he has his own opinion now about what he likes now that he's getting older. So that's what excites me the most outside of my music, inspiring people to be a better version of themselves every day. You know what I mean? That's the that's the only other equal that I would say. You know, my music playing for somebody that I don't know, and they're like, "Man, this is dope. This this kind of hit me because I'm going through the same thing, and it kind of helped me get through." It. Like that's that's the goal. You know what I mean? The everything else is just a byproduct of it. But the down being a being a, a teacher, you know what I mean? Be, being a teacher and being a student and allowing my work to 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 push other people to be great. And that's that's all that matters for that. Yeah. And what discourages me is uh, just me being in my own head about my own music, you know, and I think that's just a creative thing, but it stifles so many creators, including myself, you know what I mean? Because sometimes you, you want something to be how you envision it, and sometimes you could over, overthink it, or sometimes you could, you know, you could think yourself out of doing something that was actually a good thing for you, you know, or taking a step to say, I want to put this record out, but you're like, hey, it's not ready yet, but you know that that's the only discouraging part about music and and I also have a profound respect for the younger generation because their mindset is like hey we're just having fun let's do this and put it out mm -hmm. and a lot of times because they do that they let the world decide whether or not they like it or not you know so they kind of re, they get rid of that fear getting rid of that fear earlier in the, in the, at a younger age um, it's so dope to me, you know, and it's something I even look up to in the younger, in the younger music, you know, makers and musicians that kind of just have a, hey, we're just making it and we're going to put it out. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But on to the next, like, that's so dope because you get locked in this, this circle of trying to be perfect. And it's like, you'll never be perfect, you know? Yeah. So, somebody, someone's going to love it. Someone's going to hate it. At the yeah. end of the day, you just got to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. and keep it moving. That's what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where do you see yourself uh, in the next five years? Um, sometimes I'll be wanting to do a 90 million things at once, man. I'll be wanting to make make movies. I'll be wanting to make music. I'll be wanting to build a house. <laughs> so yeah. I just want that I'm just, at whatever I'm doing at peace. But I definitely see myself as a, as a, as a very uh, prominent figure in entertainment period you know across the board from film to music um to acting to uh to cre being a, a creative being able to work with people like yourself on, on projects in the future like you know knowing that we we was in the same acting class at one point and to see you rock out and do things and be a part of movies and commercials like that's amazing to me so i just you know i just i'm working hard to get to the point where you know pretty soon we can pick up the phone and say hey we're doing this and actually execute, get it done, and be able to not only enjoy the fruits of our labor, but take care of our families as well. So, oh yeah, that's that's definitely coming. That's definitely coming. You know what I'm saying? Just, just gotta. I just have to cross a couple lines so I mm -hmm. can you know, finance you correctly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that time, that hey. time is definitely coming. Yes, sir. Definitely there. Yes, sir. What what advice can you give to, you know, up and coming artists um, looking to break into the music industry? Um, whew. Simple, just create from the heart. Don't create from a space that everybody tells you you should just create from what makes you move and what makes your spirit happy. Um, don't be afraid to tell your story. And from a music standpoint, if I was to give you any music advice, you know, fall in love with music, instruments, like real instruments, fall in love with the idea of playing piano, the idea of playing guitar, playing drums, the idea of listening to music without words that's, you know, from instruments that's 
you know, inspired, you know, by God for us to, you know, bring here. Because, like, you know, digitally, we're in a digital age, and you can all you can make me can make beats on computers and alter your voice or or do anything that's cool and creative with music. But music at its core is is something beyond our understanding. The only things that's like natural can really make us from a human standpoint move. So you if you can balance that out where you you learn the digital part of it, but you learn the actual rawness of what music really is. Um I feel like your impact on your in your sound and how you're able to touch people authentically will be a lot bigger, you know, or have a way bigger effect. But that's it. No, no, that's a that was a, a great uh valid point to say just create from your heart. Yeah. Um, back to you. What do you feel is your best song project ever released and why? Ooh, um my my best project ever released was my R&B album entitled The Room. Um, and the reason I feel like it was the best is because it took me the longest to make, but it's also where I'm growing from. You know, it's like you work all my life. I just wanted to make an R&B album and I finally made one. And I'm able to use that as a, as a benchmark to say, okay, now I can get better and better and better and better and better. So, um, you know, uh, it's just more so of a, of a teaching because when during the process of making it, you're like, oh, this is perfect. And then after you make it and put it out, you're like, oh, wow, this is what I can do better. Or this is what I can capitalize on. And this is how I can learn and grow. So it just showed me that no matter what you do, you're always going to grow. You can always get better. You just keep going. So that's my favorite project, just because it's a benchmark. Okay. Okay. Uh, elaborating more on, on your son. You think he gonna get in the engineer room, producer room with you one day? I don't know, man. Uh, I might have a little surprise for everybody soon, man. So you, you know, got a little something on my sleeve. I don't know. You might, might see him on some. You might see him behind the scenes. You never know, dog. But uh, he love it, man, and I, I love that he love it. So if it's if it's his choice to pursue it, I'm gonna support him one thousand percent. I'm gonna push him as hard as I can until he flying in whatever, you know, direction he flying in, you know? So that's just, I feel like that's just my duty as a father, as a man first, but as a father second, um, just, to, just to pour into our kids, man, you know, you know, from, from a loving point, a godly point, a teaching standpoint, just, and just pushing them to whatever they choose to do, so. Okay. Uh, also, let me see, what do I want to ask you? Um, or do you have any visuals? coming out soon yeah i mean i actually do um i got a couple features that's dropping soon uh with some other artists um that we're doing some visuals to i'm packaging my visual for my ep together right now so uh it's gonna be dope man going into the fall is gonna be real real unique and uh i can't wait i can't wait man. visuals is definitely coming up and me and my uh, business partner Omar, we call the fall you know that's Football season, basketball season, that's when the boys come to play. You know what I'm saying? Play play <laughs> Is it uh anything you want to tell your fans, uh the audience um about you that they don't know, um, that you haven't really stated, but just anything about yourself? Uh nah, I mean, um, I'm cool. That's it, man. I'm I'm cool, laid back. And uh I just wanna I just want to be a part of the, the, the uh, part of the work, man. You know, I want to support people like you and you know make good music. That's really it. I'm a, I'm not too complicated of a coin. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can you just tell tell the good people where to find you on your socials, uh, YouTube, anything, so they can come follow you, check out your music? Uh, absolutely, man. First and foremost, say thank you all for even taking the time out to check this interview out. You guys can follow me at I am Trent Monroe on Instagram. I am Trent Monroe YouTube. I am Trent Monroe uh, Facebook and uh, Spotify, Apple Music, you name it, uh, SoundCloud. The music is all there under I am Trent Monroe. Um, yeah, man, thank you again for just taking time out to listen. Thank you, thank you, 
for 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 taking the time out to support my boy AD and his and his movement. And thank you and big shout out to all the other artists and talented and creative people that you have on your channel. I wish y'all much success. And uh, yeah, man, let's get it. Yes, sir. No, this is no a That's Trent Monroe, and that was another episode of Who's Hot Exclusive. We out. Tap in. When you don't know. Baby, I know that you're grown, you got knees too And now you're on the west side He doesn't even care Don't let him get it, don't let him get it They not me, they not in this shit, don't win it I'm in the studio just trying to flip a penny I guess I don't mean to leave you at home by yourself all alone But you do I miss you so much, but I gotta just finish this song I was in the studio Bump in my ride Studio I was in the studio Studio You know I'm hustling to make it So stay by my side The studio You always talk about you in the studio Just have me sitting here waiting for you It don't even take that much I just want a little bit of your time You act like I'm bothering you or something Damn you know what? Fuck it. I don't know. You make time for what you want.